Hi, this is Chad, VP of Products at Slate Digital. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at the new features of Virtual Mix Rack 3. Now, Virtual Mix Rack, as the name implies, is a plugin that presents you with a studio rack, and you can load a bunch of individual processing modules into that rack to create a customized mixing channel for your productions. Now, these modules are often modeled after old school, tried and true, expensive and hard to find analog gear. This is EQs, compressors, gates, and so forth. And because the number of modules is always growing, it can be kind of daunting to know where to start, especially if you're a newcomer to Virtual Mix Rack. So some of the new features in VMR3 are to help you learn what these new modules are and get your hands on them as quickly as possible to get the best results. But if you are a veteran of Virtual Mix Rack, we've also got some new features for you, uh, like resizing and sidechain input. So in this video, I'm gonna go into all of these features, show you how they work, and uh, yeah, let's just dive in and check them out right now. Okay, so let's take a look first at how we can use the new Discovery Preset Browser and Macros to dial in some sounds really fast. Uh, I'm gonna start with some overheads here. Uh, this is what the drum track sounds like right now. It's all right but I think the drums could use a little bit more high end on those uh, cymbals. Yeah, it's kind of a, a dead sort of sound. So let's open up the Discovery Preset Browser. I'm gonna sort by instruments, look at some drums, and uh, kick, modern drum boss, oh, overheads, hey, that's what I want. Uh, let's load that up. And there is our chain. Now I could just start tweaking things directly, but, um, there's some nice macros set up over here on the side. Uh, and I'm just gonna start tweaking them directly to see if they do what's written underneath them. So high boost. Oh yeah, that brought out some high end. And if you'll notice, when I turned that up, it actually moved two knobs at the same time. So we got a 10K shelf boost on the, um, on the uh, FGS. Uh, but we also got a 16K boost with the SDPE1 at the same time. You can see both of those moving together uh, and they move at slightly different rates to one another. If we look at the macro control, we can actually see that the two curves are different. They don't uh, move at the same amounts. So when you're designing your own macros, you can also change how these uh, slope up and down to uh, reach the targets that you want at certain positions of the knob. All right, so let's go back here and uh, maybe cut a bit of mid out. Yeah, moved that, I'm gonna boost some low, but make sure I don't have too much sub coming through. Let's squash this thing. Ah, oh, yeah. Uh, so this is really cool. So when I turned up the sub cut, not only did it boost the input into the FG stress, but it also turned down the output so that the overall level stayed the same. It just kind of increased the amount of compression that was going on, which is cool. Let's give it some drive. Oh, about there should be good. Now let's go ahead and check this out in the drum mix. Now if I were to bypass this. Oh yeah, the hi-hats just went dead. <laughs> let's put it back in. Yeah, brought that life back. Nice one, Robbie. Good preset. All right, so I'm gonna keep going. Let's go over to the kick drum. Let's do the same thing again. Take a look at the instruments. Kick, drum destroyer, EDM kick, no, kick. Robbie, yeah, let's do, <laughs> let's do yours again. Uh, your last overhead one was good. And let's start cranking this stuff up. Uh, I'm actually gonna solo this one up so I can hear exactly what's going on on the kick first. Yeah, we need beater. There it is. Thank you. Scoop a bit. Bring up a little bit of the low end. Not too much, it'll get boxy. Let's put a gate on it. There we go. Just the kick. Push. Ah, uh, yeah, that puts some compression on now. Cool. And some drive too much. All right, so let's hear what that sounds like in context. Mm 
pretty good without. Yeah, lost some of that top end, lost some of the punch. Ah, yeah. Nice. In fact, I can probably even turn this up just a bit. <laughs> Robbie, this is great. This is a good one. Two for two. Good job. Okay, well, let's uh, maybe check out something not drums. Uh, let's take a look at the bass here. And uh, bass amp emulator right at the top. Let's see what this one does. Transient shaping. Ah, this brings out more of the sustain and brings the attack down. Oh yeah, that added a bunch of presence. I like it. Oh wait, whoa, whoa. we don't need to actually saturate so hard. Make sure we're compressing. Cool. Well, let's uh, get this guy in the mix. See what we got. There you go. Awesome. Without the processing. Processing. Very cool. Yeah, so that's uh, how you can just dive in and get uh, great results using just the uh, new discovery presets and the macros. And uh, as you saw, you can create your own macros uh, as well. You can just uh, click on a knob here and then just start clicking on things to map it. And you can also change the behaviors. You can even create these interesting curves so that you get nonlinear control of the knob. You can set where it should uh, max out. Uh, and all various shapes uh, so you can really customize this any way you want and then save your own presets. It's really cool. These next three features are ones that have been requested of VMR for a long time. Now the first one of those is sidechain input. Now sidechaining is what allows you to control dynamics processors via signals from other channels in the DAW. And uh, the way I would do that here in Studio One is to go up to the sidechain menu choose the source channel, in this case the uh, kick sample, which is uh, this channel right here. And all of these processors are sitting on the drum bus right now. And uh, if I were to just hit playback, this will start responding and compressing the drum bus like it normally would. We still have one more step to make this respond to that kick channel, and that is to switch the side chain from internal to external for this module. Now, when I play it, it will start compressing on the kick instead. Just like that. I can control the aspects of the compression as I normally would, and you can see those are different versus the internal. The internal is responding mostly to the snare drum, where external responds to the kick only, because that's the only signal that's coming in. Makes sense. But things start to get a little weird when we start looking at some of the other modules. For example, the FG2A, this original device did not have a sidechain input at all. But since we modeled all of the electronics inside this device, we know where the sidechain input would go in. And so that's what we've enabled with this external sidechain input down here at the bottom. So again, we can take a look at its normal behavior. It too is mostly responding to the snare drum. And now when we switch it to external, boom, it's responding to the kick drum instead. Turning up the peak reduction increases the amount of compression that happens on that kick drum. Makes sense. Ah, but things start to get weirder as we move on here. Now we're looking at FG stress. Now FG stress is designed in a way that's very similar also to like the FG116 in that it has a fixed threshold. And the way you would change the amount of compression is by either increasing or decreasing the audio level into the device. So with this fixed threshold here, if you wanted more compression, you would turn up the audio signal so it would hit that threshold sooner and cause more compression. But when we are using the external input, we might need to change the two separately. So that's what's happening now. Um, so for example, internal, 
it's going to mostly respond to the snare drum, as always, right? And if we wanted more compression, we would turn this up. The signal gets louder, but we also see more compression happening at the same time. But now when I go to external, now it's responding to the kick drum. But you'll notice that if I turn this down, the amount of compression does not go down, just the level does. Similarly, turning this up does not increase the compression, it just stays at one level. So the way to change the amount of compression that's happening is with this gain slider right next to the external button down here. If I turn this down, now the kick doesn't hit that fixed threshold as hard and we get less compression. But if I turn this up, then the compression gets stronger and stronger. So. Keep that in mind when using these types of com uh, compressors. The input does not work the way it normally does when using the external. Uh, gates work as they normally would. When you put it on external, it just opens up anytime that kick comes through. But something like the transient shaper is really bizarre. Um, this, you know, even though it has an external sidechain input, it is not going to work uh, in the way any of these do. Um, it's not listening to the level of the signal coming through. It's listening to the transient and sustain portions of the signal coming through. Um, that's the analysis that's happening. So any time that detects a transient in this signal, it's going to process it as you've set here. And any time it's in the sustain portion, it will process it as you've set here, um, which can be kind of interesting. Let's check it out. So this kind of looks like a compressor because it's turning down any time that transient from the kick drum comes through and in this way it is kind of working like a compressor. A really fast one by the way, right? If I were to turn this time all the way down, this uh, can become like one of the fastest uh, duckers there is out there. Um, but I can also turn it up and it boosts the entire mix any time there is a kick. I can turn down the sustain. Now you can really hear what it's doing. So now I make the kick drum hit harder, only in the bass frequencies. Kind of interesting. So just keep that in mind. This one works uh, very differently. Uh, the actual gain level coming in here doesn't really make any difference because, again, it's not listening to the level. It's just listening to the, um, the transient and sustain components of the signal coming in. Now, the second uh, requested uh, control here for VMR is the out gain that's been added at the bottom of each of these modules. Uh, most of these modules did not have any sort of output level. This one does, but most of the others don't. So using this control, you can now adjust the amount of signal going from this to the next one in the chain. So um, if you create something that's really loud here, you can then bring it down and tame it so that when you toggle this on and off, it's not an abrupt change of volume anymore. It's, it's, it's controlled. And the very last thing that we've added is up here in this menu, and that is the scaling. So now we've been running this a little bit larger. That's the original size. Um, we can make this smaller if I'm working on a really tiny screen or if I wanna have a couple of these open at the same time. Um, I can also set it uh, quite large. Yeah. So, uh, and it <laughs> dropped one of the uh, modules off there just to make sure I still have some room to work uh, on the screen, even with it that large. Um, and you'll notice that these two are grayed out for me. And that's because if I were to set these two, it would actually become too large for the screen and it would be uh, impossible to reach all the controls. So just know that depending on the size of the screen you're working with, some of these options may be available or disabled. But now you can just find the optimum size you need uh, to work and uh, yeah, it's, it's a very nice improvement. So there you have it. Those are the new features in Virtual Mix Rack 3. Now, as I say at the end of all of these videos, the best way to really understand what I've been talking about is to try this out for yourself in your own music. Now, if you already use VMR, good for you. All you need to do is open up Slate Digital Connect and you can download this update today. VMR 3 is backwards compatible with all the previous versions, so you can even open up old projects and start making use of these new features and workflows in them. But if you're not yet a VMR user, 
Head on over to SlateDigital.com and sign up for the 14-day free trial to the Complete Access Bundle subscription. The subscription contains VMR and all of its modules, as well as all the other Slate Digital plugins, SSL and Harrison Audio plugins, the Academy Educational Courses, the Virtue Assisted Mastering System, and the Slate Sound Sample Library. It's all contained under one subscription. The value can't be beat. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.